What is up, speckers, traders, and players? We are back with a new video. First things first, we're going to announce the winners of our uh, contest that we had last week. And uh, unfortunately, we didn't get 20 uh, comments, but uh, the people that did comment are going to get a bonus because we didn't get 20 comments. I'm going to give everybody two free uh, random tokens for uh, last week's comments, and I'll announce the winners. And then I will actually put them in the comments down below so you can check and see if your name's there. I have my email address in the about section. So if, you're e if your uh, name's down there and you didn't listen to the rest of this video because you are already bored, you can just look down there and see if you won. If you're listening to the video now, uh, you're going to get your name called out if you're a winner. First up, Solo Knievel. You are a winner, my friend. Next, we've got Mike Bulmer, 9823. We've got Travis Henderson. We've got MT Gold or MTG Old. I'm MTG Old as well, so, uh, but I'm not getting the tokens. You are. Uh, Matt Hogan, Jason Iorio, Jeremy B, Mike Kelly. Uh, Mike Kelly, I think you won the last time as well. And then I'm going to butcher this name, but uh, I'll give it my best shot. Uh, w Suchel Butel. So if you heard your name or you read it down below, shoot me an email and uh, we're going to get these uh, tokens out to you guys. So <clears throat> without further ado, we're going to get on to the rest of the video. I was going to make this a spec video for Commanded Cards in Kaldheim. And uh, unfortunately, I got uh, stuck on one card that uh, really did a, <clears throat> really did a, uh, job on on my uh, poor small old brain and uh, basically made it <laughs> explode so i'm going to talk about that card and uh the degenerate things that i think that card is going to be capable of and uh, you know uh, you can let me know if you agree with me in the comments below or if you think i'm just uh totally nuts about this card but uh yeah i am talking about none other than a maskwood nexus so I'm going to get a uh, presentation up. We're going to talk about the things that I think this card can do. And uh, yeah, let's get that started. All right, here we have my uh, wonderful blank screen. I've already shot this video one other time. We're going to see if uh, these animations work properly. If they don't, well, I'm probably not going to shoot again. Here we have the card. It is an artifact, cost four colorless mana. Creatures you control are every creature type. The same is true for creature spells you control and creature cards you own that aren't on the battlefield. You can pay three, tap it, and create a 2-2 blue shapeshifter creature token with Changeling, which is also all creature types. I don't know. I just looked at this card. I was uh, going through the list of uh, Kaldheim cards, writing down what I was going to talk about, my spec targets. I've got a pretty decent list that I'll be talking about in a subsequent video, but this card just stuck out as being completely bonkers. I don't know what uh, uh, Wizards was thinking when they printed this card, the things that you can do with this card because all of your uh, creatures are now every creature type, whether they're on the battlefield or not, uh, is just crazy to me. So uh, this brought me back to uh, Nemesis. For those of you that aren't familiar with Nemesis, Nemesis had uh, five creatures in it, one for each color that allowed you to search your deck and uh, find a creature of a specific type. So you were limited only to creatures of that type. But with Mask with Nemesis and multiplayer, uh, multiplayer, multicolored decks uh, being very prevalent in EDH Commander, uh, you get to have multiple uh, enablers from Nemesis in your deck. And if you happen to draw one or tutor for one or get one on the battlefield and able to use it, then you can really search for any creature in your deck, and that to me is crazy. So let's get started. First up, we've got uh, Lynn Sivy, Defiant Hero. <clears throat> she is a white, uh, pay X, tap, search your library for a rebel card with converted mana cost X or less, and put that card into play, then shuffle your library. For three, you can put target rebel card from your graveyard on the bottom of your library. So uh, she is my least uh, favorite, besides black. I didn't include the black one. The black one is actually my least favorite. But of the four that I'm going to show you, she is my least favorite. In the early game, um, she's not as good. But in the late game, that second ability to be able to just recycle through your graveyard 
and uh, pull out uh, any rebel card afterwards. You don't have to tap to put the rebel on the uh, bottom of the deck, so you can just pay three mana and then pay X in uh, mid and late game and go get that creature that somebody just killed or you know whatever. So uh, pretty pretty good ability late game, amazing ability late game actually. Next up we have uh, Sea Hunter. This is a blue, pay three, search your library for a merfolk card and put that card into play, then shuffle your library. You know, because merfolk, they can't feel pain. They just wiggle because they're scared. Uh, the flavor text on these cards uh, is pretty funny to me. Uh, so again, if you get a Sea Hunter on uh, line and you've got Mask with Nexus in play, you can really fetch any creature in your deck. <clears throat> Next we've got Mog Catcher. Limits you to goblins, but hey, everything in your deck's a goblin, right? So pay three, search your library for a goblin card. Put that card onto the battle, uh, uh, into play or onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library. You know, because they're not worth much, uh, but they're easy to catch. You know, easy to catch, like Crater Hip of the Emoth is easy to catch. <clears throat> Next up, we've got the one that I use in uh, Reese the Redeemed. Uh, it's a favorite of mine. Uh, I remember when I first started playing with this card, people just didn't realize that uh, how degenerate this card was. And that's just with elves. Uh, you throw every single other creature in your deck into the mix, and this card is bonkers. Uh, so uh, now, people who are in my play group, if I land this card, they usually try to kill it pretty quickly. But you pay three, search your library for an elf card, and put that card into play, then shuffle, shuffle your library. Because it's okay. They're just elves. So let's take a look at some of the creatures in white that you can pull with uh, these guys. <clears throat> First up, we've got uh, Avacyn, Angel of Hope. Flying, Vigilance, Indestructible. All the permanents you control are indestructible. So yeah, you search her up, and then every single permanent on the board that you control is indestructible. Uh, that's uh, usually game over or pretty close to it uh, if you land an Avacyn in, uh, in the early game in Commander. We've got uh, Sun Titan, uh, Vigilance, when Sun Titan enters the battlefield or attacks, you can return target permanent card and convert a mana cost three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. So, uh, you know, tons of things that you can do here with uh, Sun Titan when he enters or when he attacks, especially if you've got uh, cards that you're consistently making use of by sacking, sending to the graveyard, uh, and they're giving you some utility, and then when he attacks, uh, you can just uh, get those cards back. And they go right back onto the battlefield ready for uh, reuse. Next we've got Lynn Vala, Keeper of Silence. Anybody who's played against her knows how devastating she can be. Uh, anybody who's played uh, with her knows how awesome she can be if she's on your side of the board. Activated abilities of creatures your opponent's control can't be activated. In EDH uh, these days, that's a pretty devastating card to land on your side of the board against your opponents. We've got Alesha Norn, a Grand Cenobite, a Vigilance. Other creatures you control get plus two, plus two. Creatures your opponents control get minus two, minus two. Uh, complete uh, token hoser usually. Uh, token strategies often just uh, die, lose all of their creatures to uh, an Alesh Norn that uh, you put on your side of the battlefield. So uh, gives your creatures a ton of extra power and uh, a lot of times, even if you don't kill their creatures, you're going to win most of the exchanges that you're gonna get into uh, with him on the field. <clears throat> Grand Abolisher, another devastating card uh, for uh, opponents. Uh, during your turn, your opponents can't cast spells or activate abilities of artifacts, creatures, or enchantments. If he's on the field, he is a huge target. He's got a bullseye on his back. Uh, this is just so devastating uh, for people to play against. If it's not your turn and the person whose turn it is has Grand Abolisher, you're pretty much just locked out of the game at that point. Uh, you can't, you really can't do anything. Uh, at that point, so uh, horrible, horrible card, unless you're the one putting it into play. Shalai, Voice of uh, Plenty. I love the way that this pairs with Avacyn, Angel of Hope. Um, she's flying, Angel, you, uh, you, Planeswalkers you control, and other creatures you control have Hexproof. Uh, you're going to need to play her in Multicolor, which most of the time you're going to be doing that with these cards anyway. Uh, for four colorless, two green, you can put a plus one plus count, uh, one counter on each creature you control. That's amazing. That's crazy. So, uh, yeah, uh, between her and Avison, Avison would gain hexproof, 
and uh, everything on your side of the board is indestructible. So pretty, pretty crazy there. Uh, the other enchantment that uh, you can use with that as well is a privileged position. Uh, privileged position uh, protects all of your other permanents, gives your other permanents uh, hexproof, and uh, Shalai uh, gives everything else hexproof. So uh, privileged position and Shalai and Avacyn Hope, you, they're locked out. There's, uh, they can't target any of your permanents. Uh, they can't destroy any of your permanents. Uh, you've pretty much run away with the game at that point. All right, so let's take a look at what's next. Uh, God Eternal Oketra, double strike. Whenever you cast a creature spell, create a 4-4 black zombie warrior creature token with vigilance. When uh, he dies, he just shuffles back into your library. Uh, I included this. You'll see why uh, later on, but, uh, you know, the other creatures, I think, are far better than uh, God Eternal Oketra here, but I, I did include him. <clears throat> All right, let's take a look at uh, blue. Uh, we have a Gilded Drake. Uh, so a Gilded Drake is a flying uh, drake. Uh, when he comes into the play, you can exchange control of, or you must actually exchange control of Gilded Drake for target creature one of your opponent's controls or sacrifice it. So uh, if you don't exchange control, he will just uh, die immediately. Uh, this is great against uh, anybody who's attacking you with a huge creature or some, you know, some creature that has some effect that's uh, devastating, uh, or you just want to steal something from somebody. And with the four enablers I showed you early on, you can do this at uh, instant speed. Uh, basically, uh, just throw Gilded Drake into onto the battlefield and uh, steal something. And give them a 3-3 three, three Flying Drake. Yay! Ginja Taxius, Core Augur. Anybody who's played against this uh, card knows how devastating it is. It's got Flash as well. Uh, but uh, that's not going to matter here because you're going to pay 3 mana uh, for with most of the other cards that I showed you. And uh, dump Ginja Taxius, Core Augur on the battlefield. At the beginning of your end step, you're going to draw 7 cards. And each opponent's maximum hand size is reduced by 7. So you always get a full hand, and if they don't have some way to uh, keep uh, an unlimited hand, they are going to be top-decking for uh, the foreseeable future. Uh, Palancron, uh, this is a uh, combo enabler. Uh, you can uh, search this out uh, very easily uh, now. So uh, yeah, go get your combo enablers as well. Mirror Regery. Uh, he's a merfolk lord, but it has the uh, additional ability to allow you to tap or untap a target permanent whenever you play a merfolk spell. And guess what? Uh, Maskwood Nexus makes all of your um, creature spells merfolk. So tap away or untap away. Uh, Patron Wizard, uh, since, uh, uh, since Maskwood Nexus makes all of your creatures wizards, uh, I've thought this was a funny include. You can tap uh, an untapped wizard you control and you can counter a target spell unless it's controlled or pays one. So you basically force spike uh, by tapping a wizard. All your creatures are wizards so you just get to keep tapping wizards down and and uh, making sure that uh, they can't uh, that uh, they can't play their spells or that their spells are going to be very costly. Uh, the other thing, too, with uh, Maskwood uh, Nexus is the fact that you can just, on the fly, at instant speed, create a 2-2 blue sh shapeshifter. So you tap a wizard, they still got one mana left. Uh, oh, no problem. Uh, I will uh, just uh, create a 2-2 blue shapeshifter token, and you're going to have to pay one more. And if they can't, their spell gets countered. Not only that, though, because you're increasing the cost of spells during a player's turn, they get to play less. So you're really, really just uh, choking that player out of being able to compete in the game when their spells inevitably uh, are going to cost more uh, by a factor of how many creatures you have, right? All right, up next, we've got uh, Black, uh, Crypt Ghast, uh, got Extort, uh, whenever you tap a swamp for mana, add a black to your mana pool. So you just doubled your mana, and uh, he's got extort. Awesome. I'm sure uh, you know people that are playing with you at the table are going to be ecstatic when you uh, search this guy out and land him on your side of the table. Uh, <clears throat> especially when you know you're searching for a goblin or an elf or 
some uh, merfolk. Here, let me show you my uh, merfolk crypt guest. Jim Pompaluder is not something that you would normally search for, but I felt it was a pretty cool include. He's got a cycling ability. You pay two black. And uh, when you cycle Jim Pompaluder, you can have target player lose one life for each zombie in play, which is all of your creatures. So they will lose life for every single creature you control. I just thought it was an inter interesting interaction. A grave Titan, uh, Big Daddy uh, Grave Titan here, Death Touch. When he enters the battlefield or attacks, put two... Uh, two, two black zombie creature tokens onto the battlefield. And hey, if you search them out with Mask with Nexus and you happen to have a gem palm polluter in your hand, uh, that's an extra three life. Awesome. Micaeus the Unhallowed, uh, Intimidate, uh, whenever a human deals damage to you, destroy it. So uh, other non-human uh, creatures you control get plus one, plus one, and have Undying. <clears throat> uh, Razaketh the Foul-Blooded, a flying trample, pay two lives, sacrifice another creature, search your library for a card, and put that card into your hand, then shuffle your library. Kind of a mix between uh, Vampiric Tutor and Demonic Tutor. You have to sack a creature, you're going to pay two life, but the card does go into your uh, goes uh, into your hand as opposed to on top of your library like Vampiric Tutor. And here we have another tutor effect, Rune Scar Demon. Uh, flying, when he enters the battlefield, search your library for a card, put it into your hand, shuffle your library. Shieldred, Whispering One, I hate this card when it's on the board and it's not on my side of the board. Uh, this card is so devastating to uh, all the players who aren't playing the card. Uh, all of your opponents are going to hate this card, do hate this card, should hate this card. Swamp Walk, at the beginning of your upkeep, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. At the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, that player sacrifices a creature. And then Skithrix, if you guys are into Infect, because who isn't into Infect? Uh, and uh, yeah, that's uh, my picks for black. <clears throat> We're coming up on red here, Itali Primal Storm. When Itali Primal Storm attacks, exile the top card of each player's library, and then you get to cast any number of those spells from among those cards without paying their mana cost. Because yeah, you know, uh, cheating with Mask with Nexus is not enough when you can also cheat with Itali. Uh, you can put Itali at the end into play at the end of your opponent's turn, just before it is your turn, and then Itali will not have summoning sickness. Or if you have a haste for Itali, uh, you're all set there as well. And the fact that you just get to cast uh, spells off of your opponent's uh, top deck is usually not not very good for your opponents. At least whenever I've played against Itali, I've hated it every single time. Hellkite Tyrant. Uh, Hellkite Tyrant is awesome with Michael Synth Lattice. Uh, Flying Trample. Uh, whenever it deals combat damage to a player, gain control of art, art, all artifacts that player controls. Michael Synth Lattice and Hellkite Tyrant is an auto win for the game, usually. Kazool Tyrant of the Cliffs. Uh, fetch this puppy up, throw him onto the battlefield, and then you're going to get a 3 3 red ogre for every creature in opponent controls that is attacking you unless they pay three. So you just get uh, automatic blockers. Uh, yeah, if they can't get rid of this guy, you've got automatic blockers for days and days and days. Uh, and if they don't want you to get those, they're going to have to use uh, three mana for every single uh, blocker that you have. Urbrax the Hidden, uh, great card. Your creatures, uh, uh, creatures your opponents control enter the battlefield tap, and of course yours have haste. So yeah. Uh, seems pretty good with Helikai Tyrant, Itali Primal Storm, really, pretty much uh, most of the, most of the cards. Peripheral Sky to the Forge, indestructible, uh, and whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, it deals two damage to each opponent, and then it also buffs your creatures by one, plus one plus zero, and as if uh, two uh, damage for each creature that enters the battlefield is not enough. Uh, you can get Torbrand, uh, Thane of Red Fell, because any time a red source deals damage to an opponent or a permanent in opponent controls, it deals that much damage plus two. So now two turns into four. Isn't that sweet? Zealous Conscript. Here is a uh, combo enabler. We can fetch that, and uh, off you go. Have fun with your combo. Ilar, the Raised Boar. I just really like this card. Uh, you can just, you know, put a creature from your hand into play, uh, tap, 
uh, and attacking, and then that creature gets returned to uh, your hand at the beginning of the next end step. If he dies or is put into exile, you can put it into its owner's library, third from the top, so kind of a god uh, um, effect there, right? Or god. So, yeah. Pretty cool. Here we go into green, my personal favorite. Uh, let's see what we've got. We've got Avenger of Zendikar because, you know, getting a 0-1 plant token for each land you control along with a 5-5 is not a bad deal, especially if you're doing it for three by searching your library. And then whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you put a plus one, plus one counter on each plant creature you control because, hey, you know, plant creatures are zero ones and they just need to be bigger. Dryad of the Ilias, Iliasin Grove. Uh, you may play an additional land on each of your turns and a mana fixer. Right, land you controls are every basic land type uh, in addition to their other types. So, yeah, uh, great mana fixer here and a uh, great ramp card. Nyx Bloom Ancient, speaking of ramp, ramp cards, uh, trample if you tap a permanent for mana. It produces three times that mana instead. Oracle Moldaya, uh, super popular EDH card, very powerful card. You can just play an additional land on each of your turns. So now you can play three lands if you have Dryad and Oracle of Moldaya. You're also going to play with the top card of your library revealed. But hey, if it's a land, you get to play it from the top of your library. Sachi, Daughter of Sashiro. I thought this was kind of cute here. Other snakes you control get plus zero, plus one. All your creatures are, of course, snakes. And since they're also shamans, they are now mana dorks. That can tap for two green. Seedborn Muse should be in every single green deck ever uh, built. <laughs> untap all permanents you control during each of uh, each other player's untap step. Love that card. <clears throat> Nasty Terasty. So Terastodon enters the battlefield to destroy it to three target non-creature permanents. For each permanent put in the graveyard this way, its controller puts a 3-3 green elephant creature token onto the battlefield. Uh, one interaction that's kind of interesting with this is Leyline of the Void. It says for each permanent card put into for free each permanent put into a graveyard this way, they get a three three elephant. Well, if you've got Leyline of the Void and you've got a Terastodon, uh, it's a replacement effect. Those cards never hit the graveyard, so they don't get any elephants because you're a sweet, nice person just like that. Felonite Druid, sacrifice a creature, uh, and uh, you pay one colorless, one green, tap him, sacrifice a creature uh, to uh, turn all of your force into two, three creatures until end of turn. They still count as a land, so uh, they'll have summoning sickness if they get turned into creatures. But uh, later on, we'll see why this guy is uh, kind of important, because uh, you can do some degenerate things when you animate your lands. Crater Hoof Behemoth. Who doesn't want to see that bad boy across from the uh, table when uh, somebody searches it out for three mana and drops it on the table? Say hello to my little elf. Right? Uh, crazy. Ridiculous. And then Vornclex, as if uh, Crater Hoof wasn't uh, bad enough. Uh, yeah, just go get the Vornclex Trample. Doubles your mana, and it just uh, taps your you know, uh, opponent's mana down, keeps it tapped down. Uh, if they use it, they don't get to untap next turn. So that's it for uh, for green. Let's see what's next. We got multicolored cards, and we got Gisela, Blade of Gold Knight, because, hey, as if, uh, you know, four damage for each creature that enters the battlefield isn't enough, uh, uh, this angel here uh, not only has flying for a strike, but if a source would deal damage to an opponent or a permanent an opponent controls, that source deals double that damage to that player or permanent instead. So you went from Perforos at 2 uh, to uh, Torbrand, making it 4, and now Gisela makes it a nice even 8. Uh, yeah, sounds like you need 5 creatures to uh, kill everybody at the table. Or less, actually, because they've been taking damage from Torbrand and... Uh, uh, Perforos the entire time. But if somebody's going to deal damage to you, they're only going to deal half that damage. So, uh, yeah. Uh, I never like seeing this card across from the table, uh, but uh, I do like seeing it on my side of the table, as I've mentioned about many other cards in uh, this preview here. Moldrotha, the Grave Tide. Uh, everybody knows this, I think. During each of your turns, you may play a land and cast a permanent spell uh, of each permanent type. 
from your graveyard. Now, I have no idea who uh, created this card, who thought this card was a good idea, but oh my God, uh, you know, <laughs> talking about hating to see cards across from me at the table, like this has got a huge bullseye on it whenever I see it on the table. It's a completely ridiculous card. Uh, you know, to, the ability to be able to just cast uh, a permanent spell of each permanent type from your graveyard, it just, uh, it's just not fair. It's not fair. Zakama, Primal Calamity. Uh, usually you gotta pay nine to put this into play, so hopefully you don't have uh, that much mana to do all the other uh, wonderful things that Zakama does. But if you only pay three to put it into play, uh, you're probably gonna have a lot of leftover mana, especially late game, and you're probably gonna have a lot of fun doing all the things that uh, Zakama brings to the table. You can uh, pay two colorless and a red. Zakama deals three damage to target creature. Two colorless and a green. Destroy target artifact or enchantment. Two colorless and a white. Why don't you gain three life? And of course, you don't have to tap for any of those. Those are colons after those uh, uh, after those mana costs. So yeah, if you've got the mana, you can do one, two, all three of them. You can do anything you want multiple times. Beautiful, sweet, awesome. Not really. And next, we've got uh, colorless cards. So what do we got in colorless? What's behind door number one? Oh, look, it's just a Blightsteel Colossus. Trample, infect, indestructible. He gets shuffled into his library if he gets exiled or uh, would be put into a graveyard. Oh, actually, be put into a graveyard for anywhere. Uh, I'm wrong about the exile. Um, yeah, this is uh, always a fun card, right? Everybody loves seeing this guy. Am I cool? The Promised End. Another uh, great card, 13-13 uh, flying for trample protection from instance. Uh, you do not get the uh, cast bonus here, but um, you know having a uh, flying trample protection from instance 13-13 on the table is not bad. Uh, not a bad gig either. Goes like Butcher of Truth. Uh, you don't get the cast bonus on this either, but Kozilek has Annihilator Four. Anybody who doesn't play with Annihilator Four. It's uh, horrible. So if uh, you get attacked, you have to sacrifice four permanents before you even get to declare blockers. And of course, this is one of the original Eldrazi Lords, which means if it's put into a graveyard from anywhere, its owner is going to shuffle it and his uh, graveyard back into his library. So you're not going to deck anybody who's uh, running one of the original Eldrazi Lords. Ulamog the Ceaseless Hunger, you don't get the cast trigger here, you're not going to get to exile anything, but he is indestructible and he does mill 20 cards whenever he attacks. Ulamog the Infinite Gyre, uh, Kozilek's buddy here, who also has Annihilator 4 and who will also shuffle your graveyard into your library if he gets put into the grave. So, uh, Annihilator 8, anybody? Void Winnower, oh my god, uh, another card uh, that's devastating to opponents. Uh, usually it just cuts somebody's deck in half, leaves people with handfuls of cards that they can't play until Void Winnower leaves the battlefield. Your opponents can't cast spells with even con converted mana cost, and uh, just to uh, make things even more fair, uh, your opponents can't block with creatures with even converted mana costs either. So, yeah. <clears throat> sweet, sweet people who love to play EDH put Void Winner in their decks. Next, we've got uh, some enchantments and artifacts that I think pair really well with Basswood Nexus. We have got Intruder Alarm. Now, remember that guy that animated lands? Uh, yeah. So, uh, creatures don't untap during their uh, controller's untap steps, but whenever a creature comes into play, untap all creatures. So, uh, really, uh, not only do you get to untap your enabler, but once your lands are animated, you are going to untap those lands as well because they are also creatures. So you're just going to be able to uh, untap the enabler, untap your lands, put a creature into play, untap your enabler, untap your lands, rinse, repeat, get every single creature you have in your deck onto the table uh, for pretty much free because you've got, uh, as long as you keep playing creatures, you've got unlimited mana and unlimited uh, uh, creatures, limited only by the amount of creatures in your deck to put on the table and impress your friends. 
Obelisk of Erd will give those creatures a plus two, plus two of the chosen creature type, which they're all creature types, so they all get plus two, plus two. If that's not enough, Shared Animosity will also give them plus one, plus zero uh, for each other uh, attacking creature that shares a type with it. So a mini uh, Coat of Arms effect here just for the attack power. But, you know, if you're missing Coat of Arms, yeah, you, that's another one that appears pretty well with this because every single creature is going to get that bonus of plus one, plus one for each other creature on the battlefield. You have five, one, one uh, little uh, tokens. Well, now they're five, five. Uh, tokens 20 power 25 if they're uh, if you got uh, five of them you got 25 power on the board uh, because they're all going to share a creature type regardless of what they are the uh, world tree is uh, one of the other cards that I was looking at in this set that's completely bonkers but when you pair this with masswood nexus uh, it's bonkers to another level uh, you know power level here is over 9,000 of course, this enters tapped, but it is a land, so it's a little more difficult to get rid of. If you control six or more lands, you're going to have mana fixing. You're going to be able to add a man, uh, uh, one mana of uh, any color for any of your lands. So, uh, yeah, it just makes it easier to get that last ability off. If you pay ten mana, two of each, you can sacrifice the world tree. Search your library for any number of god cards and put them onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library. So uh, I was talking with somebody about uh, the World Tree before we had a discussion about Masswood Nexus. I had mentioned Masswood Nexus to them, and they said, yeah, that's an okay card, but I think I like uh, the World Tree uh, better. I think that's a better card. And it may very well be uh, when once we see play, uh, we may uh, find out that the World Tree is a much better card. But... Uh, they were talking about, hey, you know, how many gods are there? How many do you think you can put uh, in a deck and get them all out with the world tree? And, uh, you know, he had a good chuckle when I mentioned that uh, with Maskwood Nexus, they're all gods. So he hadn't uh, seen uh, or thought about that interaction. But yeah, uh, the two of them together will get you every single creature in your deck instantaneously for uh, 10 mana. Congratulations. Have fun. That uh, is going to conclude this uh, short video. Uh, again, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did and you like the content that I'm putting out, hit the like button, uh, subscribe, hit that bell notification so you get notified when I put up a new video, and uh, share this video. It really helps the channel out a lot. I want to continue doing these videos. I hope you guys enjoy them, and we'll see you next time when we do our uh, next mailbag. Don't forget, if you entered and you won, send me the info so I can get these cards out to you. We'll talk to you next time. Peace. So we're going to talk a little bit about that card. Uh, I, it's The card is bonkers to me. Uh, I don't know how it got printed. I think it's just uh, a card that's going to allow so much uh, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I'm going to keep recording. I don't even remember the name of the fucking card. What's the goddamn card name here? Okay, uh, Maskwood, uh, whatever, right? Maskwood, Maskwood, Maskwood what? What's it called? Maskwood what? Nexus. Maskwood Nexus, holy shit. All right, so the card is Maskwood Nexus that we're going to be talking about today.